Hey guys, Korth Camel ADV. We're gonna do the install video tonight for the Camel Gut Guard on the Cove 450 Rally. Uh, the Rally comes with a carbon fiber skid plate, but it's quite thin. So if you're going to do any kind of enduro riding or light ADV riding, uh, the factory carbon fiber might not be up to the task. If you want something a bit more durable, our aluminum gut guard might be a good option for you. I'll show you all the features. I should mention it's about three o'clock in the morning and it's about 30 Celsius, which I think is about 90 Fahrenheit here in the middle of the night because it's so freaking hot. I'm trying to shoot video without sweating like this. I'm going to be dripping sweat all over the place as I show you um, the install for the skid plate. So we've got the actual skid plate here. This is 3 16 aluminum, powder coated, welded inside and out. Quite a beefy piece. We've got our mounting brackets here. These are 3 16 stainless. We've got a removable, replaceable um, exhaust guard. The exhaust comes out on the bike at a bit of a downward angle here. So if we lower the skid plate to, um, to fit the lower part of the pipe here, we would start to lose ground clearance and we didn't want to do that. So. so we left the skid plate at the height it was and then we made this replaceable guard on there uh, because that is the lowest point on the bike. It's going to take a beating and we wanted to make sure that you could uh, replace it, refresh it when you needed. So this guy is eighth inch stainless. We've got a quarter inch UHMW linkage protector and of course all of our fasteners. So the install is easy, but I wouldn't say that it's straightforward. It is important that you follow the steps in the order that we do them. Um, so in your fastener pack, you're gonna have four M8 by 16 flathead bolts and they hold the mounting brackets onto the skid plate. We're gonna put these on first and then we're going to put the whole thing up onto the bike, which is uh, not really the normal way you would do it, but it's just, this is the easiest way. We're gonna put blue Loctite on these bolts first. In your fastener pack, there are three different lengths of M6 flathead bolts. So just make sure you use the right ones. We're gonna put the linkage protector on. So that's gonna be the M6 by 20. There are four of them here. So bolts up from the bottom, flat washer, nylock. Then we're gonna put our exhaust guard on here. And this uses four of the M6 by 16 bolts and one M6 by 12. The uh, 12 is going to be this front mounting hole here. And this is the 12 mil. It's gonna go in this hole right across uh, from the pen nut here on the main bracket. And it doesn't get a nylock, it gets a jam nut. So the skinny little guy here. And the reason is, is the exhaust runs right over top of this and we don't have room for the jam nut and a washer on here. You're gonna notice the backward F here and the upside down R. These, that should be flipped and that should be flipped. Um, when the guys pressed the PEMS in on this first batch, this got all wonky. Um, so moving forward, these will be in the right orientation. Just uh, keep in mind when you're putting the rear bracket on, this swoop cutout here is clearance for your oil drain plug. So when you go to do service on the bike, you take the skid plate off, but you're gonna leave uh, the mounting brackets. So just make sure that your oil drain plug is in this pocket here. This one doesn't really matter which direction it goes. So in your kit, there's some three quarter inch uh, closed cell foam tape here. Uh, this is about 16 inches long. We need two pieces at eight. So, this in half and take a razor knife cut the end at about a 45 degree angle so then we're going to take the tape we're going to peel the backing off of it and we're just going to start in this corner make sure that there's no dust on here make sure this is good and clean or this isn't going to stick very well so we'll put that in the corner and then we're just going to roll this around
And we just want to make sure we push it into the corners really well here so it doesn't start to lift. And with that, the skid plate's all prepped and ready to install on the bike. So we're going to remove the factory skid plate. There's five M6 bolts that hold it on. We've got one at the top here. And this is a this is the pro model, so it's got the water tank in it, so there's a ton of bolts under here. It's this one, this one, that one, that one. Uh, and then the whole skid plate will drop out. Uh, new skid plate is not compatible with the water tank on the Pro, so just something to be aware of. So we've got these slots here, and we've got the four mounting bosses from the original skid plate. So we're going to use these bolts to hold our mounting brackets up into the frame. They're going to get red Loctite, but we're going to put these in with no Loctite right now, get everything centered, and then one by one we'll take these out and put the Loctite on. So in your kit, this is the last supplied bolt in the kit. This is an M6 by 20 large flange Euro head, and there's a thick fender washer here. So that just goes over top, and this is for the upper mount in the skid plate. Uh, it's nice to start here, and that way you don't have to try and hold the skid plate up while you're trying to install it. So. So we're just gonna put that in loose. And you can see the foam here is up against the tank, so that helps to center the skid plate um, on the tank. And we're gonna come down to the bottom. So the foam in here does a pretty good job of centering uh, the skid plate against the tank. Just have a look and make sure both sides are about the same, and these guys are. I'm pretty happy with that. So we're gonna come up to the front one here. We're gonna tighten, tighten this upper bolt. So we're just gonna tighten these. And then one by one, we're gonna pull them back out. We're gonna add red Loctite to them and put them back in. So the reason we're doing it this way is I don't wanna put red on and then have the bolts in and out, uh, loosed and, loosened and tightened and while well, we're trying to get everything centered. So we get everything started, we get it where it's supposed to go and then when we take them out one by one, we don't lose all of the alignment. So when you go to do service, you're going to take that front mounting bolt out and you're gonna take these four M8 bolts here. You're gonna leave these where they are when you go to do uh, the reinstall on the skid plate it's a lot easier because these are already lined up where they need to be. The reason that we did this, um, somebody's going to point out that using M8 bolts here when they're attached to a bracket that's held on by M6s makes no sense because the M6s are the weak link and I 100% agree. The reason that we did what we did with that is the M6s are into the frame. We can't do anything about that. We can't bump those up to eights, but interacting with M6 bolts, they're easy to break. Um, the heads are easily damaged. Uh, I would much prefer to use an M8 bolt when we're installing, when we're taking something like a skid plate off and on for service. I would rather be using M8 bolts. It's not a strength thing, it's a durability thing. Um, just when they're in and out, just because the heads are so easily damaged on an M6 uh, and a countersunk M8 with a five mil Allen is a lot easier to work with. So that's why we went the way we did. Uh, we're going to get some questions about uh, the spacing up here. Because the strength, of course, is down here, and we just have that one M6 bolt at the top, we did not want to put uh, the upper section of the skid plate right against the tank. If you take a big hit here, uh, there's not a lot to keep it from moving. There's flex and everything, even though this is, you know, beefy aluminum uh, with big brackets and stuff. This is a long way from that... Um, 
for that, that area of strength. So we wanted to flare this out a little bit, but we don't want to get rocks and things in here. If we get a rock sitting between the skid plate and the tank, it's going to sit there and wear the tank, which is why we put the foam in here. And if you drop the bike, it's sliding along the ground. We wanted the skid plate proud of the tank. So when you're crashing and rolling past here, we're not grinding away on the skid plate. So the tank or the plate, I should say, is proud of the gas tank all the way down. That's it. That's all. If you have any questions, as always, info at camel-adv.com. Thanks for watching.